Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Tekanoff. I'm an attorney and self-published author in Fresno County, California. I wrote a book about the Article 5 Constitutional Convention Clause. I would like to show you how, at the beginning of our nation, the national power to propose constitutional amendments was never limited by state proposals. So setting up the scene here, the Constitution has been approved in 11 of the states. The U.S. government has begun to operate. The House of Representatives is meeting on June 8 of 1789. James Madison made a motion to prepare a Bill of Rights and set out uh, various proposals. It's now July 21 of 1789, and Madison is again bringing up the issue. And he's begging the House to go ahead and, and bring this issue up. Mr. Sherman stands up in reply to Mr. Madison and challenges him a little bit. And Mr. Sherman here is again making the distinction between structural amendments and rights-based amendments. And he's saying Article 5 is intended for amendments which experience points out to us to be necessary. And the Constitution has had no trial whatsoever, so how can experience have pointed out any defects? Here, Elbridge Jerry pushes the issue and basically says, do we even have the amendments from the state conventions before us? If not, I make a motion to bring them forward. Then we get to a part of the record where it states that a desultory conversation ensued and it was questioned whether the subject generally was to be before the committee of the whole or those specific propositions only which had already been introduced, meaning whether or not they were limited to the proposals being made by the state legislatures only or whether they had the power to propose what they come up with as being appropriate. Mr. Ames gives us an excellent piece of evidence of how the framers and ratifiers and the members of the first Congress interpreted the Article 5 Convention Clause. Here he's telling everybody, look, I don't have the intention of considering every part of the Constitution. That would be the same as forming into a convention of the United States. In other words, forming into the Article 5 convention, which had the power to review every part of the Constitution. And then he goes into saying that he doesn't want people to recommend any amendments that um, would tear at the frame of the government. In other words, he's not looking for structural amendments. It was decided and then ordered that James Madison's motion to prepare a Bill of Rights, uh, including the specific amendments that he proposed, together with the amendments from the states, be referred to a committee, and that they would have the power to take all of those into general consideration, meaning they had determined that they had the general power to propose amendments. Now these early records of the House of Representatives that we're looking at, they came out of newspaper reports so what we've been looking at came out of the Congressional Register. It was the most complete at that time, and they ended up using that to become the official record in, record in the annals of Congress. But we also look at other newspaper reports from that time as backup. And here's a little blurb out, out of the New York Daily Gazette. Mr. Smith proposed that the committee should have the subject generally before them without being bound by the amendments proposed by some of the adopting states and to report what they deemed proper. This was agreed to. And finally, we see an entry in the House calendar for that date. This is found in Bait Bowling and Vickford's 1991, Creating the Bill of Rights, the documentary record from the First Federal Congress. It states here the motion by Smith that committee not be bound by state recommendations for amendments agreed to. And at this time, this was never formally challenged by the states. The members who had attended the Constitutional Convention and state ratification conventions that were sitting in the House of Representatives all looked at their power to propose amendments as being a full power not limited by the state recommendations. Closing out our discussion, please consider the theory of free government. The full power to alter government should be held by the people in convention as a check and balance. 
not necessarily by the government itself. And just as the elections clause places the national government above the states in order to preserve the union, Article 5 places the People's Convention above the national legislature for purpose of constitutional amendment also to preserve the union. For further study, I invite you to take a look at my book, Guide to the First Article 5 Convention of the People.